The southern Māori seat of Te Tai Tonga has been held by the Tirikātene Fano for 63 years. Sir Eruera Tirikātene, his daughter Fetu Marama, and for the last nine years his grandson Labour MP Reno Tirikātene. Now three challengers are stepping up. The Māori Party's Taku Taferis, uh, the Green Party's Ariana Paritu Tanganui Tamati, and from Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis, Anituhia MacDonald. Can they unseat the incumbent? He tau patu patu nui kei te haere, kei te mātaki taki koutou i a te hui, pōti, rua te kau, rua te kau. I'm Mihi Ngārangi Forbes and tonight four candidates in Te Tai Tonga go head to head in our Māori electorate debate series. Now, so far this year, more than 35,800 Māori have registered to vote in Te Tai Tonga, and in 2017, 68.3% of registered voters headed to the polls. So let's meet the candidates vying for their votes. They are Labour MP Reno Tirikātene. The Greens, Ariana Paritu Tanganui Tamati, the Māori Party's Taku Taferis, and from Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis, Anituhia MacDonald. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora. Kia ora. I'm going to start by asking each of you for your opening statements. Reno kei a koe. Tēnā koutou e taku whānau o te tai tonga. You've put your trust in me for the past three terms, and it's a responsibility I take seriously. I'm an experienced MP and a lawyer, and in all of my mahi, I'm guided by tikanga Māori and the kōrero tukuiho of my tupuna. And they said, mahi a te mahi, work hard, be guided and be manaki for the people and do not takahi the mana. And that is the tokopapa that I stand on. And those values are aligned with the Labour Party. And the Labour Party wants to continue as the next government. And with your totoko, with your two ticks, we can ensure a stronger, larger Māori caucus in the next Labour government that can, can, can deliver on the, on the uh, uh, deliver for our people. Nō reira, pōti mai mō rinio tiri kātene, me te, ta, me te rōpū reipa, me u tonu tātou ki te kaupapa, ka hoa ke tonu tātou. Tēnā koe e reno, Ariana. Ah, tēnā koe. Uh, tēnā koutou ngā iwi Māori, ko Ariana Paritu Tanganui Tamati Aho. I'm proudly standing for the Green Party. We have achieved a lot in this first term of government and many are familiar with what we've achieved, like setting targets for climate change. We've achieved the biggest investment ever in conservation but what a lot of people don't realise is that we have led through a lot of the legislation that's passed. We have a particular focus on equality as well as protecting nature and ending climate change, addressing climate change. We find it disgraceful that a quarter of our children live in poverty. So we called for a welfare advisory group and it resulted in three of the recommendations of 42 being adopted, $25 a week. That's not enough. We want to do a lot more to, to ensure everyone has enough to provide for their families. 44% of our children live in damp houses, rentals that is. So we drove through the healthy home standards. That ensures that landlords have to provide a decent warm house. We want to ensure that Warren of Fitness ensures that they live up to that requirement. And we also push through pay parity, which means that we can set industry standards across sectors how that translates is that we can have conditions and pay across uh, different sectors, which means that it, it actually helps those who are on low incomes and it also provides better working standards and that can be set across the nation. It particularly applies to low income people 
and women who are often found in those caring industries and low-paid industries. And we want to ensure that everybody has enough to live in dignity. We're absolutely committed to that. But we know this is a really uncertain times. We know that we, what we've been doing and how this country has been run since the 80s has to change. And we want to form transformative policies that will make us more resilient and help us to plan for change. We want to reform our transport and our energy sector so it's cleaner, healthier and cheaper. We also want to grow food and fibre sector so that it doesn't contribute to climate change but it helps to address and tackle climate change. So we're very, very committed to continue, continuing that path and I'm asking you for a party vote, Green Party, so that we can ensure that we can push through that transformation that we need. Kia ora. 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 The Māori Party stands for the Māori people. And our right as Tangata Whenua and Aotearoa to an independent voice in Parliament. An independent, unrestrained and unapologetically Māori voice fighting for our treaty rights in the country of our own. A voice for our people that will hold a pro Pākehā government to account on the basis of the treaty that they propose to us, the treaty that underpins their ongoing rights to citizenship in this country and the treaty that they agreed to uphold and honour. The Māori Party champions Māori solutions. Māori solutions with complete autonomy and control. And what Māori solutions require are four things. Number one is treaty-based government. Number two is independent Māori authorities. Number three is equitable funding models. And number four is statutory empowerment. Now, David Longy said it best in the 1980s when he said, equitable outcomes require inequitable inputs. And since then, no Pākehā government has risen to the challenge or demonstrated either the courage, the determination, the compassion or kindness to step up to that fight for Māori. The Māori Party will lead that cause for our people. And as our tipuna have left examples for us to follow in this day, we'll set a new benchmark and ensure that our, our tamariki mokopuna have something to follow in their time. Nō re tiwi, kia kaha mai rā i roto i tēnei wā, vote your Māori Party candidates in Pōti Māori. Tēnā koe, ani tu hea. Tēnā koutou kato, ngā mihi nui e te ao, ngā mihi nui e te atua, ngā mihi nui e te tūpuna, ngā mihi nui e te kaimahi, ngā mihi nui e ngā rangatira, ngā mihi nui e te whānau, kia ora. Ko tapuai unuku te maonga, ko wairau te awa. Ko rangi tāne o wairo te iwi, ko nāti hui taki te hapu, ko maki tānara te whānau, ko tweti maki tānara o kutupona, ko Donna McDonald tuku mama, ko ani tuhia McDonald tuku ingoa, no kaua tiri a hau, ingari, inae nei, ko o tautahi tuku kāinga. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora whanau, my name is Ani Tuhia McDonald and I am representing the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party. We have been fighting for fair cannabis laws for 25 years and we can see that the problem within our community, the Māori community, is that there are so many of our people disconnected from our whakapapa, from our whenua, from our tikanga and from our reo. I will be standing here to advocate to make sure that we're doing what we can do to assure that we don't lose our whakapapa. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou katoa. Oh, te Taitonga is the largest of the Māori electorate, stretching from Rakiura in the south to Pōneke in the north. So we sent Jody Ihaka out on the streets of Wellington to take the temperature of the electorate. What else do we like about our community? Chickens. Hi. Chicken fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> I'm Jodie Ihaka. 
Welcome to Te Tai Hauru. We're here talking to voters about what's up going into the selection. Majority of the problems are addictions. Alcohol, drugs and stuff are in the community as well. Suicide is a massive thing. The myth that is ruining the community. But suicide is, um, it could be here. Could be, someone could be here right now that's having that thought. This store is called Free For All. You pay $3, you take whatever you want, as much as you want. So I work at the pub uh, just around the corner and a lot of people just spend thousands on gambling. They're taking loans out just to gamble. You know, we get a lot of people at our whakamā to come in, but we take them in, we make them feel comfortable. You know, it's, it's, it's not really... Aroha mai, i he mātou. Uh, that was the wrong... Sot. That's the wrong... Is, 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 a, is a debate. So we're going to play Te Tai Tonga again. Roll it. OK, we don't have that, so we're going to get it into there. OK, as you heard there, some of the um, awanga wanga concerns of the people of Te Tai Tonga, jobs, housing, addictions, um, but, but mainly, mainly jobs. So I'll go to you there, Reno, um, that part, the partai that was meant to happen there. What is your response to the concern around the lack of jobs? Well, we're in a... COVID recovery at the moment. Our government is focused on creating jobs and ensuring that we have a pipeline of skills and training so we can actually, you know, produce more jobs through our infrastructure investments. That's part of our plan for our COVID recovery. We've been doing direct investments, whether it's jobs for nature. Jobs are vital. It's ensure, we want to ensure that they're good jobs, that they're good paying jobs for our whānau. And that's the whole focus of our COVID recovery, which we are rolling out right from the wage subsidy, protecting jobs right through till now in terms of building up our economy to ensure that our whānau can have a good life. One of the one of the industries that um, Ariana that uh, you know is renowned for in te, te Waipaunamu is Māori tourism, and that's taken a big hit with yes. the COVID. So, you know, how would your party rebuild that industry? A lot's been done by the government already, um, but um, how we would do it is to support that change. I know that ten million has gone specifically to Māori. And I know that about 300 people have lost their jobs. I was just talking to somebody the other day about this. Um, we're hoping that the um, 1.3 billion jobs for nature will help to um, facilitate some of those jobs, those community-focused um, jobs to help clean up nature. Uh, and um, but we, but we also want to see the government actually do specific um, jobs to help the hospitality sector. So we want to bring them together and actually uh, talk about pathways. And, um, and there's a lot of potential to pivot into things like clean energy. So uh, we want to actually work with those providers to see if whatever opportunities there are there. And in the digital space also, I know that there's support for digital enhancement. Kapai, uh, Anituhi are social enterprises, uh, businesses with cultural, social and environmental goals, which reinvest their profits. You know, is it time to rethink business as we know it? Hi, kia ora. Yes, I believe, um, I just want to add on to uh, the comment that Renal made. Um, before COVID-19, our whānau were already losing jobs. Um, COVID-19 has obviously increased that amount of job losses now, which is why the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party stand behind their policies of creating more than 5,000 jobs and a $1.4 billion revenue with a cannabis economy. Um, giving power back to our people for running businesses on our own land. Uh, not only jobs, but that's businesses for whānau. You know, you won't be a worker, you'll be a business owner. Kapai, so, going to come to you, Takata, you know, how do we find a balance, you know, between economic growth and social and environmental obligations? Uh, kia ora, mihi. Um, I just want to say that the, uh, every policy that the Māori Party has creates a, Māori, a local Māori economy around it. And our first policy, which is the whānau first policy, is a, an assertion that 25% of the COVID spending goes to Māori for the development of a Māori uh, initiatives delivered into Māori communities, which will spur on the Māori economy, in particular the more local Māori economy. He kaikei has encouraged 
uh, the government, successive governments for the last 10 years to work more closely with hapu, whanau and iwi organisations at a local and regional level. And we need not leave, um, you know, we don't need to reinvent too many of the wheels. And I just want to touch on what Linnell's mentioned about the, um, the jobs that will be created over the next wee while off the back of the COVID response. And the problem there for us as a people is that successive governments have always failed to connect those jobs to our people that need them. And so the Māori Party would utilise the whānau water uh, network, it needs to be ramped up to the tune of billions of dollars to ensure that the brokerage between those jobs that are created and the whānau that need them happens and happens in a timely fashion. I, I think just, I I know, I'm just that, going to say, so you, you do have a procurement uh, policy now that is, some, that is not the same as the Māori Party, but one, so what is it, that 25%, what are you offering? Absolutely, our procurement policy is a game changer. It's, it's a, it will allow Māori businesses to connect in with major infrastructure projects. We have $7 billion worth of infrastructure projects for the South Island alone. And we need to ensure that we have the capability among our Māori enterprises to be connecting them in with the corporate supply chains and then they can participate. But the government has changed the rules and we want to ensure that we have our Māori whānau working on those big well, projects that, that and having good paid dollars, jobs. That so the ecosystem, is going to go to Fletcher's, ecosystem, Higgins and Downer. The yeah, ecosystem can, can, is all But, but can, you, can you actually you know, guarantee that that $7 million, that $7 billion, billion is, not billion is going, going to go to, go to, go to, to our business, like No, it's like not. No, it's not because it's social procurement, social procurement. So what's there's the, an obligation. The we have changed. We so have no, changed. And we've asked this question over a number of, of debates is what is the percentage? Even if you give well, us a roundabout. Well, if we, take the example, if we take the example of Auckland Council and what they're doing, uh, a good starting point is 5%, but we have to build up the capability. We can't just throw 25% of all the infrastructure projects. It's Kapai. irresponsible. Tēnā koe. Bumpier than a Cook Island, a uh, Cook Strait ferry in a storm. Kia mai tonu mai rā, e hoa mā, ka hoki mai te hui a kone.
Araki mai anō, you're watching the tussle for Te Tai Tonga. And Te Tai Tonga is a massive electorate. It takes 16 hours to drive it, throw in two ferries and a flight to the Chathams. Reno's Auntie Fetu once said the size was an example of institutional racism. Ariana, do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, like to try and get around that and to represent the electorate, it's an enormous amount of energy, extra costs, etc. Um, so there is a suggestion that we should actually break, you know, look at uh, equity of area as well. Mm. Where would you put it? Where would you divide it? I, I, I would like to um, put that back to the hapu and iwi and ask them, you know, what would be a, is, uh, involve them in the negotiations. Yep. Um, one being uh, Pōniki, and then maybe, yeah, maybe three areas in the south, perhaps. Kākata, is there a difference of diversity of hapu and iwi as well in that large seat? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got everyone from Te Atewa and Ngāti Tō and Pōneke to the Ariwi in the top of the south, and then every part that makes up Ngaitahu Whānui. So there's definitely a huge, a broad base of iwi and hapu representation that should be acknowledged. Yes. Uh, Reno, the legacy of your whānau is undeniable. The Te Rikātini whānau has delivered this seat to Labour for 63 of the 80 years. Yet... You have no ministerial portfolios. You're number 29 on the list. Is this an example of how Labour values the work of its Māori MPs? Oh, no, not at all. We're all part of a team, and our list uh, placings are actually a recognition from the party that they do value us. We're in the top 20s. But it's not about the positions, it's about working as a team. But certainly we all have ambitions to become ministers and to do more and leave an impact in the do game. You, which ministerial positions would you like? I would take any ministerial position on offer, but I'm particularly interested in economic development, regional development. You know, Te Taitunga is so large, we need to ensure that we have a Waiponamu focus, you know, representation at the, uh, at the Cabinet table. And, and, do you, and do you think the Labour Party recognises the 63 years that that your whānau alone has delivered this seat to them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we are part of a team, but we do carry a lot of money and we do come with the largest electorate in the country. And that says a lot. And I certainly hope that we can, you know, join my Ngāpuhi relations uh, so we can get a nice mix in terms of representation and furthering the interests for Te Tai Tonga. We'll come back to you after the election to see what ministerial positions you get. Um, Ki utaki tai guardianship ranges from the mountains to the sea in this seat. Let's talk about fishing because it's big business uh, in the south. Takuto, are we good kaitiaki of our moana? Uh, we're the best kaitiaki of our moana, uh, Mihi. And in the case of um, Māori's rights to natural and wild resources, they were defined, they were fought, won and defined in 1992 with the settlement of the Fisheries Act. And it's no different to the argument that was around the foreshore and seabed and it's no different to the argument around fresh water today. And, you know, the, the fishery settlement was built to ensure that iwi and hapu had rangatiratanga over their takutai moana and their freshwater resources, and we have struggled to get that from the Crown. And so we've got to be clear that the only people who will look after the resources in a fashion that will benefit Aotearoa Whanui is Māori. Ani to here, overfishing, plastic in the ocean, the warming of the sea temperatures, that's all on us. Mm -hmm. You know, what's our part to play here as Māori? Aye, as Māori, um, I believe that we need to be taking more responsibility um, as our duty as kaitiakitanga. However, I feel like the problem here is that we have so much disconnected whānau that they can't connect with the hapu, the iwi and the whānau to help with these areas that need assisting. Um, in saying that, I that's why I hope to connect our whānau so that we can be working more with the hapu, the iwi and the whānau in order to make this work. As I stand here representing the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party, I will build the Māori numbers in this party and we will work with hapu, iwi and whānau. Reno, Reno um, are we too influenced by the fishing industry? Oh, no, not at all. So, so is this Māori how our ancestors fished? Is this how our fishing ancestors industry. fished? It all goes back to the treaty. Our customary fishing rights are based on the treaty and they expand into our commercial interests as well. We are huge stakeholders. I'm proud that I was the blown MP that led the charge around, against the Kermitic century to ensure that our rights are recognised. We need to do that across every fora and Māori are huge but, players but and have done cost? so for a while. But at what cost? Iwi rights at what cost? The cost of the environment? The cost of, you know, the fish stock? We have a sustainable 
system, the quota management system. It's all about sustainability. It's all about working in harmony with our customary interests, our recreational rights, commercial. That is the system that we have. That and was, it's worked, is, is it, Ariana, is it that sustainable? Was, that was the intent of the quota management system. But at the moment, um, there's areas around an ec economic exclusive zone that's it's been under, it's overfished and there's um, species that are being lost mm. and um, so, it's, it, if so it's not sustainable it's not sustainable so we actually as the Green Party actually want to work with uh, Te Oku Kai Moana and um, in a, and Iwi and Hapu and bring in the Ministry and Government um, to develop a system to review the quota management system. I want to come to you, Taku. So, the, um, you know, poorer, nation, poorer nations than us, like Nui, they're putting 40% of their fishing, uh, the EEZ, into a sanctuary. You know, last government that the Māori Party was in, they failed to get the Kermadec Ocean Sanctuary across the line because of Māori rights. And, you know, Ngāti Kuri is one of those iwi, and they want the Kermadec Sanctuary. So whose rights are we protecting here? Well, the reason the Kermadec Sanctuary didn't get across the line is because the government took a... Uh, straight over the top approach to what they deemed was consultation with the iwi who have interest in that area. Now, the QMS has proven time and time again in species over species over species to not be sustainable. The science might be there, but there's no regulation of the fishing on the high sea. Any fisherman worth his salt knows that. And uh, And I know that our customary rights are constantly bulldozed straight over by the commercial industry and people down in MAF and the Ministry of Fish, they pay no attention to the iwi and hapu claims and uh, protests that come across their desk, but it happens on a regular basis, Mihi, so we need to be strong in this area because once those fish stocks are gone, they take generations to come so, back. So are you saying that how we are fishing today is not sustainable? It's, it's not, not sustainable. No. There are better ways to catch fish. There are more high-quality ways. It's another part Absolutely. of a quite simple, low-value economic model that this country has had for hundreds of years. We need to do things in a, in a, in a higher-value so, uh, so method. So three people here say it's not sustainable, but this the, government says it is. Well, the, the fish the stocks tell and, us it isn't. Checks, no, the checks right. and balances are already... No, they're not. Programmed into the system. We, we, need to, we, we have, we have, uh, we have sustainability cameras. decisions that are yeah, made every year based so on science. To, well, how come it's taken so long to put cameras on boats? Yeah, because it, we, the technology and the systems needed to be, um, you know, bespoke. Go we have to, it's, it's, it's we have to taking, ban harmful. It's taken time, but yes. we have made a commitment that they will be introduced, <laughs> and they're already on uh, a number of vessels, uh, specific fisheries. So, Ani Tuhia, do you buy that? Do you take that it's taken too long uh, to, to put? To cameras on boats is because of technology. <laughs> I, um, no, sorry, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> like the brother said here, GoPros are cheap and easy. I... <laughs> it's, it's a lot more than that, Mihi. It's about collecting information, sending the data, ensuring that it's all safe. And ensuring that it, you know, it, just, it's not it's not about just sticking a GoPro. Yeah, it's I certainly guess, not. I need it's to, a lot yeah, more technical I'll, I'll than I'll give that. you an opportunity in here. Uh, you know, how are our oceans, you know, more important than fishing rights? Uh, I believe that our oceans are more important than fishing rights, yes, because um, the What's ocean... The balance? What's the balance then? Well, the people, the land and the ocean will stay and the people will go. Um, that's how I'm going to put it. Kāpai. More food, uh, more food for thought than a hākari at te rau aroha marae. Nō reira kia mai tonu mai rā.
Hokimai Anno. Let's take a look at what questions are on the voters' minds of this election. <laughs> Huge take is inequities or in funding and resources. Um, they're usually available but not accessible. Um, so last budget, Māori got 0.3% of the budget. So uh, my question is, how do we up our game funding half instead of 0.3% underneath the, the Article 3 of the treaty? How do we get that as Māori? Ariana, I'm going to come to you on that. How do you get that? How do you get 50% as Rob Ruha wants of funding under the treaty? Yeah, look, you know, um, the system's been failing our people in health and education right across the system. And so we, we want to set up an independent Māori health authority, same as with the education authority, um, and also um, with Tamariki Oranga. Now, um, take Tamariki Oranga. Um, there's been um, a Māori review. Um, that's an area that should absolutely go to Fano Wara for Māori-led solutions for us to deal with it, to work with our own Fano. And there's simply, um, out of the whole organisation of about 4,800, about 1,800 is actually driven, are actually social workers, and the rest are managers, and et cetera, and supervisors. And that, it, that's failing our, our, our kids and our tamariki. So we absolutely should be funneling money out from there and paying pay equity across two Māori organisations so that the funding that is paid to, uh, to the state agencies goes the same level to Māori there's legislation, there's legislation for that to happen to, you know, devolve uh, funding and power from Oranga Tamariki to Whānau Ora or whoever it might be. We do it to Pākehā organisations now at, to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. Why hasn't it happened? Well, we, I want to just correct uh, Rob's uh, math because it's absolutely wrong. It's not 0.3%. The last budget, there was $900 million of targeted spend for Māori. That's across Māori development, Māori education, Māori trades training, employment. That's 900 million. That's the biggest appropriation in the history of our country for Māori. It doesn't and the one before that Māori was half a million. It doesn't go that is targeted. To that is and, targeted. And, and it does. Fair, that is targeted not, Māori that's spend. A, that's a fair and point. And it's not an equitable That's a fair point. Uh, does even. it go directly to Māori organisations that spend? In well, the case of Wuranga well, Tamariki, me, in the case of Oranga Tamariki, we know that 40% of Oranga Tamariki fa um, funding goes directly to 12 Pākehā providers and that is subsequently subcontracted down to Māori yeah, and providers. So I'll, come back, so I'll come back to that question I asked you uh, uh, initially, is that Ariana had suggested that devolving power and resource mm. from Oranga Tamariki to Fano Ora, she said, is that something that you'd look at? Why has Absolutely. We are already looking at expand, expanding Fano Ora. We've put the most investment ever into Fano Ora. We want to move it into correct into health, into oranga tamariki. Uh, but I know about it's the numbers, enough. Mihi, because mm -hmm. I chair the committee and I scrutinise the count, Crown accounts. Mm -hmm. So that is wrong to say that we aren't funding. It is a fight. That's why we have to be in government to ensure we get our fair share of resources. But it's, um, we have to it ensure, will. and we're doing that all the time, and that's why we have a big Māori caucus in Labour to ensure we get it's those resources. Six percent is a massive coming targeted to you, spend for us. How do you convince Treasury and other ministries that investing in Kaupapa Māori is a winning formula? I've just got to do it. Well, we just need to um, just look back across the history books here, me. Uh, for the last 30 years, Māori medium education has outperformed mainstream education sure by a is. country mile, yet the government won't fund it accordingly. Since uh, Pū Ao Te Atatū in the 80s, uh, Māori methods of caring for tamariki and for social development have outperformed not, uh, mainstream ones, but they're just never supported enough. They're always kept in a cyclical funding fashion, which Absolutely. gives them one year to prove Total. something. And clearly it's not that easy, because when the Māori Party was in government, they also failed to devolve power and, and resources like, like's happening today. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is it to challenge the absolute system to a core. The solution is to challenge the constitutional framework and the constitutional 
constitutional fra foundations of the government. The government is built on the constitution of Te Tiriti or Waitangi, and the more we speak about that, the more we unravel its history, and the more we keep it in the spotlight, the closer we'll get to equity. Look, I'm going to come to, I'm going to, come to Anatu here to give her a go. Rob, Rob says that funding there is not accessible to Māori. How do we make it more accessible, you know, to individuals like Hi. to Rob with their companies? I, I believe that... Um, why the funding and um, things aren't working in these areas, because as a government, we're not doing enough in the homes with the parents and the children. Oranga Tamariki are just uplifting children rather than going into the home, seeing what the core of the problem is, instead of criminalising these parents for saying, because, come on, not everyone, there isn't whānau out there that want to intentionally abuse their child. I think you've okay. got some friends on this we, side. We're we, going to move we, we, we're going we, we to, from, to the west coast of the Waipona and we're going to shift us on. Labour promised to stop any new mining on conservation land. So why haven't you, Renal? Well, conservation estate is a massive estate and there are different types of, of uh, conservation land. Obviously, the highly prized land is off limits, but there's a policy discussion. We've had uh, coalition partners that have had different different views in this term of government, Which but we certainly want to we certainly want to uh, ensure that we are abiding by that. And if we look at our track record across the board in terms of conservation, we are doing massive investments to ensure that we do revitalise our taiao and our and our conservation estate. Um, 1.1 billion dollars jobs for nature, 11,000 jobs that are being created. Many of our, our whānau and our rangatahi are now in, uh, um, involved in uh, pest eradication, environmental projects, yeah, well, um, we all of those things. If and the Māori Party would return okay. all conservation land to Māori, how would that work? Well, quite simple. The, cr the Crown can hand it over and let the people keep it instead of giving it to them and requiring them to give it back but the who, next day. who would manage it? Yeah, like well, every solution, um, you know, this is a you common know, like question there's, there's that we get, really right, is how delicate that species well, in, in the conservation What can be said about how Māori solutions can be done, Mihi, is that there's not a sector of public work or government work that hasn't had an independent Māori, uh, Māori inquiry washed over it in the last two or three decades and they've produced more recommendations than you can count. So an easy place to start is to start applying those Look, recommendations. Look, it's not about <laughs> who delivers it, it's actually the value base and based on kaitiaki and mātauranga Māori um, have a long history of actually being able to protect nature. But we need to have <coughs> use the resources that are there in the sector to, to better do that. And, and the Crown has a responsibility to also... Absolutely. Mihi. Look after. I taiao. agree. We can't continue we can't with just business dump as it usual. On Māori to it do it. It's not working. We've got the resources. That's why we, as a government, are making sure that we can work with iwi, ensure that we honour the settlements that have been implemented. Mm. Uh, but there are. We can't just stick with the status quo. We always have to keep improving with these things. So I'm just going to continue this. A row's broken out over the conservation board appointments. Ngaita, who claims the appointments by Minister Eugenie Sage, were uh, are unlawful and they're boycotting the hui. Conservation Minister. Uh, uh, Sage didn't consult with Ngaitahu, but she did say she consulted with the Minister for Māori Development, Nanaia Mahuta. Um, Anituhia, Ngaitahu is a well-established iwi, as we know, with a number of runanga. So how can governments and councils partner better with iwi? Uh, the, I feel like the government just need to work more with the iwi. If we had more of, you know, a Māori presence in government, then we would see better outcomes for our people. Um, the government, the least they can do is, you know... And so why aren't they, Ariana? This is, you know, your minister, Green mm. Minister. Do, do, you, do you think she understands the difference between the Minister of Māori Development and Mana Whenua? I think... Uh, I know for a fact that she has made attempts to connect. Uh, and what the Green Party does is we support... Well, our philosophy is grassroots Māori, hapu, iwi. Kapa, what would uh, Māori Party do with the conservation boards if you're giving the land back to Māori? Well, the, board, the, the boards need to be chaired at least on a 50-50% basis, at least me. Um, across across the board, right, for decades and decades, right. we've, been, we waiting, run, run, running we've out been waiting for, for, running we've been out. waiting for the Crown to come around you like that to idea? build decent have, Having a better representation of Māori on those achieved boards? It, and it's not likely to any time soon. I do believe that Minister Sage uh, needed to uh, engage with 
te runanga o Ngaitahu and the Papatipu runanga. I think uh, it's an ongoing conversation and relationships that we need to ensure that, we, mm. that, that are solid. And there are going to be ups and downs along the way. But I know that her intentions are obviously genuine. And we do, but we just need to always keep on working on that relationship. It's, about it's getting louder than a telling off from your taua, ka hoki mai te hui akwane. Time to look at, uh, take a look at our second question from the electorate. Kia ora, Huria Kitato. Dismissing the misgivings of the poor man, pawning off his problems to the Sallies and the law man. Tēnā koto, ko a kushla tara kupe toko ingoa, no ngati mani o poto aho. It's not common sense government, it's common cruelty. There's a well-documented history of independent New Zealand artists having to leave this country because their work is unsustainable. What are you going to do about keeping these talents in our country so we can better tell our own stories? Ani here. do we need targeted funding for Māori creatives? I, I believe so. I believe uh, Māori creators are our creators out there, so we should be funding that. Um, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to learning. Some people are better suited in other areas. So, yes, we should be funding that. You know, Labour is supposed to be the party of the arts. Uh, so why is, you know, funding for the ballet and the symphony orchestra out of proportion with, say, Te Matatini? Well, they're absolutely different disciplines, of course. But by all means, we need to put more money into Matatini and all of our cultural arts. But, you know, the Māori we? Party were in, were in force in government for nine years and they, they didn't give anything extra to Matatini. So the, it's not about actually just plucking out a big number out in the air and just saying we're going to give that money to Matatini. We need to engage with these organisations and find out what their needs are. Uh, we've got a good relationship with Matatini and they've said they haven't asked for any money like that. They don't want any? No, but they haven't asked for that sort of scale. I mean, we're not having a Matatini for another two years and our regionals in Waitaha, we didn't even have any. So it's not like they need a massive pot of money <coughs> thrown at them right now. 1.9 million for uh, Matatini when... Um, Takuta, ta I'll come to you. So Matatini doesn't oh, need look, any more um, Yeah, kia ora. The, uh, responsible. The, the, the figure that the Māori Party Go have figure. for funding to Matatini is based on the same formula that the, that the Symphony Orchestra is funded on. In Mihi. So uh, equity is what we're about. And if it means $19 million for Te Matatini, then it should be $19 million for Te Matatini. Is that a fair yeah. point? Mm. Oh, look, we want to ensure that we get more equity across the system, but we need to engage with okay, the sector. We can't just pluck out the crude symphony numbers. Orchestra or the ballet. These no, are, these, these, these are, the economic injection off the back of um, Matatini is plus $20 million into ev everywhere it's held, me. And so it's not some little uh, 
Kapa Haka dance show that's put on on the side. It's an international festival. I'm going to go Ariana Chun. We're so. You know, uh, if, uh, we're talking about symphony. Uh, Ariana, we have a whole radio uh, channel dedicated and the content funded. It's called Concert FM. Is it time to dice up some of that platform for Matatini? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, and yes. Look, we want more money to well, go how into about our the house? funding want, from Matatini go to Farno so that everyone can enjoy Matatini. The government. You know, this is I, I'm actually disgraced to be here tonight that we're arguing about fucking. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Symphony Orchestra. Ballet and Martitini. Are you kidding me? Our people have more problems. Okay, than that. we're going to head right, down south now. TY Point, the aluminium smelter, uh, which directly and indirectly employs 2,600 South Island uh, Southlanders, announced uh, recently it was going to close. It reported it's reported to account for 10% of uh, Southland's economy. TY Point exports 1.2 billion dollars of aluminium every year and uses 13% of New Zealand's electricity. Its parent company Rio Tinto made a net profit of. 3.3 billion in six months to June. Um, in 2013, the national government gave it 30 million dollars to help save jobs. Should the government be bailing out um, Tiwai Point again, Takuta? Well, I think if uh, I think if they can bail out Air New Zealand, which has about 1,500 odd jobs across the country, the impact of losing near on 2,000 plus all the ancillary jobs in a small pocket of the country is worth going down there and having a good conversation. So, so what's the plan? Because obviously, you know, you don't want to lose the jobs down in Southland, but so, so we don't have a scenario like we did 10 years ago where they were, they were bailed out by the national government and again they've come asking. Our, our government has been very clear. We're not offering a bailout to Rio Tinto. We are engaging Transpower in those discussions to ensure we have a phased exit over hopefully three to five years Two. to ensure that, that we can uh, have a managed wind down and then also regenerate new industries in TY. And that's why our government working is working closely with Gaitahu Murihuku, with the civic leaders and EDAs right across Great South to ensure that we can manage the phase down, make sure we clean up the site with the dross. These are real, very serious issues that need to be addressed, but it's a sensitive discussion that needs to be taking place. Is and that's why we are committed to do that quickly. By December, we want to be able to provide clarity to the people of Murihuku, uh, but also, longer term, it's exciting because of the potential opportunities we could use with that clean energy uh, in like, new industries Like Ngaitahu is suggesting a green yeah. hydrogen plant to utilise right. uh, the power at Manapodi. Yeah, it's a great option. What needs Absolutely. to happen for that yeah, opportunity? No, well, you know, because we have to transition, though, because it, we've got 2,600 exactly. people relying on the jobs. Yeah, that's right. It's just transition. We've always been promoting So how do you do that? that? And um, we've got a plan for clean energy. Uh, we want to inject a lot more money into that industry and help us pivot um, as part of the plan in addressing climate change. Only to hear what co what COVID has taught us is that you know we have to prepare for global shocks. Mm -hmm. So how do we build resilience in local communities? Um, while closing down a factory that employs you know more than two thousand people isn't a way to go about it. Um, you know, the government should be doing what they can to help this for our Southland community because there isn't a lot of job opportunities down there. Um, so, well, yeah, I, I closing... I to differ. There's lots of opportunities in Murihuku. There's huge potential to expand aquaculture. We're looking at data centres. There's so much production from the bounty of the land. It just requires a lot of working well, together to in partnership between government and... The region and iwi working together and that's what we are doing our prime minister Struggle herself has gone now. and sat down with all of the key groups across Murihuku to ensure that we have a just transition and that we have a regeneration plan to ensure we can bring in those new industries and keep those high paying jobs absolutely and we, even what are we some of the trans how would the maori party transition because you've got some ideas around uh, retraining well, absolutely, Mahi. Um, retraining needs to be a key part in the whole COVID recovery economic uh, response. And the trouble that we have, and it's the trouble that we've always had, it's that systemic failings of government systems continue to not deliver to us. So it doesn't matter what the government's proposing or what the grand ideas are, the history tells us they missed the mark. Mahi, there's so no what failure. We're, no, no, what we're, what we're putting forward, Reno, is that the is that the government devolves that money, that money comes to Māori organisations who are capable now of delivering those solutions straight into the Māori communities. And if we don't get that, Mihi, this next 12 to 18 months and two years is going to be a very, very tricky 
time for our people. Well, is Ngai Kahu at the table in these discussions? Which discussions? In, in these discussions around TY, TY Point. Absolutely, absolutely. I was with the Prime Minister and the Minister for Energy and Resources. We had a hui at Wai Hōpai, Muri Hiku Marae. We sat down with all the four Papa Tipu Runga. They have a plan, they have a vision, they've come together. And we sat down with the civic leaders as well. And we, the Prime Minister was very clear that whatever happens in terms of the future plans for TY, iwi need to be right there at the table. Kapai. Yeah, we, we need to be leading that change into a cleaner technology. And also, so having those partnerships together with Iwi Hapu, uh, industry leaders and government. And it's been demonstrated over in the UK, um, like in the creative industries. Kia ora. We're going to go to break Sorry. more twists and turns than Arahura River and a flood. Stay with us. We'll be back with more after the break. We're on the home straight, the Fovo straight, that is. You like that, eh, Takuta? Hey, conducted, the, the UMR, uh, conducted by UMR and commissioned by Helen Clark's foundation, the most recent uh, cannabis poll has found 49% in favour to legalise cannabis and 45% against. So I'd just like to go through and just find where you all sit on this. Start with you, Renal, because I think I know your answer. I need to hear. <laughs> I'm voting no. I believe it is a health issue and I'm concerned when I see the devastation that drug and addictions have had on our people and uh, I believe making it widely available um, will make it too readily available for our rangatahi and so uh, I just think it's uh, not the thing to do and I'm voting no. But isn't this an opportunity to you know, turn the tide on the way that Māori are discriminated against in the justice system? Oh, absolutely, but this is, a, this is about complete legalisation and making it widely available, albeit in regulated um, you know, premises, but that direction, I believe, is, is too extreme and it will mean that they'll be too readily available for our rangatahi tamariki. I'm going to ask you another question. I know I'm meant to be just getting your yeses and nos, but what's more harmful you know, to Māori, uh, marijuana, or the criminal justice system? Oh, look. There are, the, criminal you know, the, the criminal justice system, uh, you know, we could, we could talk here for hours on that. But in terms of, we, we're not about, um, I, I'm personally, I'm not about the, the criminalisation. I believe we should decriminalise, but I don't think we should go all the way in terms of full legalisation. I agree there might be some economic benefits, but the harm and the, the problems that we have with the, uh, mental health and addictions, I think they'll only be exacerbated if we make it more widely available. Kapai, um, Ariana. Yeah. Yes, I'm voting yes for a number of reasons. Um, it, it should absolutely be treated as a health issue. It, it is actually um, about regulating the market that already exists. The fact of the matter is, is that these judges, lawyers, all sorts of professionals using this um, in varying ways, to varying degrees, but it's Samadhi that are half, of, half of those who have been um, received a criminal conviction are actually convicted are Māori, and so they are the ones that are getting, um, it's a racist, 
the way we respond to it is racist. Um, look, um, Helen Clark said, look, by a no vote is actually um, two hundred million dollars towards policing the black market, and um, so we'd be better off using that resource to actually police P, which is actually mm. a much worse drug um, to our society. It's about 50,000 people are in need of um, treatment, and the money that can be used to educate and prevent harm, that money raised from the taxes could go into that, Kapai. which we should be doing, and support services to help people. Takuta. Uh, the Māori Party is very clear that we're pro-decriminalisation immediately and then process to legalisation. And the reason we're processed to legalisation is because the framing of the questions has come from a very privileged and uh, entitled uh, viewpoint. And so they are far too simply framed. The, the impacts on our people are far greater than yes or no. And the question is essentially being pitched to middle New Zealand. So the thing is, Takata, the deal's done. The legislation's in place. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, it's not. not so, it's so, so, we'll just let, we'll just get his view, the and then we'll come back for stands. a discussion. Reno, we'll just finish with the view, and we'll come back. Well, that's that's exactly my point, Reno. Is that everything's been decided for us, and then we're throwing a question that we're not going to answer. Middle New Zealand is going to answer. And no, if you look at the current polls, committees. if you look at the current yes. polls, they're going it's at seventy thirty, seventy no. Kapa. Has that committee been already here. selected, Reno? Anitu here. Anitu here. Here's your Anitu opportunity. Committee. What are you voting? I have already oh. voted yes, Fano, uh, for the legalisation of cannabis because I believe that the legalisation of cannabis is going to connect all of these disconnected Māori back to their land, learning their whakapapa, learning their tikanga and learning their real, thriving on the lands what like our the health, did. What about the health issues? The health issues? Well, whānau are going to feel comfortable to go into their doctor and ask for help for their cannabis-related harm. You know, they can't go to their doctor right now and ask for help because they will risk getting put in prison. Māori are charged... Three but times you, higher you, than non-Māori. Yep. And prohibition has a great problem on our society. Prohibition is literally killing our whakapapa. Mihi, we have massive demand on our mental health and addiction mm -hmm. services. I'm concerned that they will be the overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the proliferation of, well, of really? legally exactly. supplied cannabis. Mm. What about, um, you know, I mean, I'm going to throw this out there because it's Central Otago is renowned, renowned for its grapevines. Could we also, would there be room there for, you know, cannabis industry? Would that Aye. be plentiful for our, you know, would that there's be productive for our people? There's plentiful Absolutely. whenua right but across to our Pau Namu is the best climate in the world for growing cannabis. Okay, Ariana, a lot of skills in the area. A lot of <laughs> money are actually very Aye. in that. That's um, what but, I don't understand. But, okay, we okay. have... Okay, thank you. We have the land, we have the labour, we have the experience. I'm going to go to... We just need the law. I need to hear. Euthanasia, yes or no? No. Any reason? Because I believe that in our transition through to the other side, that is a part of enlightenment for us to just end that is... No, I don't agree with it. Kia ora. Ta We're a no. And through our time on Māori Conversations, we had Dr Huhana Hiki who came to speak about um, the impacts of uh, euthanasia bills in other Indigenous countries. And what's known is that the people who suffer and are the unintended casualties of bills like this are the Indigenous, the poor and the disabled. And we quite literally do not need to be the next uh, in a long line of unintended consequences as a result of government policy and legislation. Tēnā koe. Ariana. Oh, I've deliberated on this um, backwards and forwards. I think... The thing that swayed me towards uh, a yes vote, um, our party supports it, um, is that there's a number of strict criteria and it was that, that one that they have to meet is experience unbearable suffering that cannot be used. Mm. And for me, um, that swayed me. But I do think that there's a, a, a dearth of palliative care um, we need to also match it with funding to support much more better services in that end of life stage and we need to have uh, Māori, uh, much more funding for Māori led by and for Māori led care as Kapai. well. It's a, it's a very clear no from me. I'm concerned there are too many holes in the legislation. I'm concerned at coercion, the vulnerable kaumatua. It's just, just against all my being, um, you know, this, this act. Uh, but I also believe that we need to put more resources into palliative care. There are other ways we can bring about 
that special, you know, that, that time without having such an extreme piece of legislation. That's just my personal belief. I, I just want to ask another question because something came up today with your colleague Tamati Coffey. Um, would you support, uh, well, you know, the government's looking at um, banning conversion therapy? You support that? I do support. I do support that policy, and I commend the work of uh, our party in terms of. I just want to go through this equality. conversion therapy. It's, a, it's a, where therapists attempt to change someone's sexual orientation or gender identity. Do you support that? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, but I, wasn't I have to keep, no... We're running out of time, so Takuta? Go. No, you don't support. No, not at all. Okay. No. Only to here. Uh, wait, wait, do we support it or not support so it? So the government is looking to pass a bill. Yep. I'm asking if you support um, banning of I version therapy. Yeah, I support banning. But still, I... you're a Carl. Kapai. Yeah, uh, ban it is my point, me. Yeah, okay, yeah absolutely. <laughs> So my last yeah. question is, you're, you go. The, my last question is, uh, given the government, uh, given the commitment of this government to walk alongside the treaty partner, um, should South Island be renamed the Waipo Namu? Of course, I'd love for it to be renamed Wai to Waipo. So you're in favour? But I'm in favour of it. But our relations up to Toihu, they might want to call it Te Waka a Maui. Uh, so you know, there are conversations and layers of things Aotearoa? that need to take place. Aotearoa? New Zealand uh, to Aotearoa? Well, again, I support Aotearoa, but there is Te Wai Ponamu. Kapai. Raki Ura, Fitiatu Ki Whare Kauri. I'm running out of time, so Ariana, would oh, you support... I just commend Noi Tahu for repatriation of Māori uh, names and so history. So you'd like Te Wai Ponamu? Oh, I th well, Whatever really the name nice is. nice to Kapai. me, but no, really, it's a conversation if, um, that we should be having with our treaty partner. Kapai. Takuta. And if they say so, then we should do that Have to, to go. support that. Yes. Aye, no tēnā iwi ona mana, no tēnā iwi ona mana. Tēnā koe, ane tohe. Aye. We've got five seconds. Aye. Ka pai. E re re ana ngā mihi ki ngā kai tono e tēnei po o nō mātou nō te ao Māori te whiwhi. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hui Hoppers will be back tomorrow at 8pm with the candidates from Te Tai Hauaru, so make sure you log on. And remember, Fano, if you haven't yet enrolled, you still have time. You can do it online at vote.nz. Ko hika na te hui no horo mai rā. Thank you. with support from New Zealand on air.